Good Sunday morning, my dear friends from Dorchester and the Union of the United Churches. I have been known as an indoor, indoor since 2018. I need to introduce myself to the people of the Union. I am Reverend Keith Ramishwa, and as I indicated earlier, I have retired to reply, and I am here today for the Reverend Mark Perry. I look forward to the service on Zoom as you will be sharing in the worship. It is the it is soft, soft Sunday after the Epiphany, and we look forward to good morning, morning with both of like what we call in the United Church generally the lighting of Christ's candle. I would like to think back to another time when the word Christ was not attached to the name Jesus. Richard Raw says that many Christians still believe that Christ is the last name Jesus. So today I would like to call it the lighting of the Jesus candle, because the word Christ is not an appellation that Jesus may have wanted for himself. Jesus eschewed all titles. So I want for us to think of the candle as the Jesus candle. And I know that's a bit of a stretch for some of us, but I've been thinking of this for some time. And I hope that we can move towards calling the candle the Jesus candle. In the call to worship, we have the litany and it's before you now. 
The Creator is both the Among Us and the Among Us. Jesus has come to embody God's reality. We have a vision of people joining together in love. Let us praise the one in whose image we were created. As we celebrate that vision, we affirm that we are one world and one family. We are open to the source of that vision, who is none other than God. Let us sing the hymn at number 658, O love that will not let me go.
Then I said, Ah, Lord God, 
truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, to me, Do not say I am only a boy, you shall go to all for whom I send you, send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, said the Lord. And the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See. In the Gospel according to Luke, in Luke chapter verses 21 through 32, we come to a significant episode in the life of Jesus as he enters the synagogue in Capernaum. Listen. Then he began to say to them, The scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Also, and were amazed with the great words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless, you will quote to me this problem. Don't cure yourself. And you will say, You hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow of Sarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, they drove him out of the tower, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their tower was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed but he the midst of them and went on his way. The gospel of our Lord, our Lord Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us take a moment for silent prayer before we sing the hymn at number 560. O Master, let me walk with thee. Amen.
in terms of radical change, the answers do not come from the mere repetition of an orthodox tradition, from saying this is the way we have always done it. Tiny Judah was shocked, bewildered, and deeply distressed over world history. Politicians and false prophets encouraged the people and their leaders to embark on disastrous policies. As the Syrian control began to wane, a complacent attitude had begun to set in. Such an attitude essentially pushed God out of the picture. A people who once lived by their covenant faith was being thrust into the world where God was absent or seemed to be absent. Is God really a God of history or have we been deceived? Maybe the prophet himself was deceived. He seemed hopelessly weak to cope with the demands of his call. He had to look beneath the surface of the contemporary religious and political world. For this is where the rubber hits the road. You know, the Spirit of God often lies beneath our world view. We prefer a God who comes down from the heavens to the one who comes up out of the waters of baptism. We do not recognize a God who comes from among the poor and the hurting. Jeremiah was drawn into every facet of human life because prophets do not work in a vacuum. Today, as then, my dear ones, politics in the Middle East did not allow a vacuum. Jeremiah had to learn the multifaceted approach even as he kept his faith in Yahweh alive. His ministry involved building up after pulling down, planting after rooting up. We expect our faith to bring us always into a place of safety. After his temptation in the wilderness, Jesus would face every kind of opposition and rejection. Small wonder that Jesus only survived three years. Maybe like Jeremiah and Moses, he was pushing in too hard. But when the one behind you is God, your faith will take a beating and is still in you. You see, God is the one who takes the initiative to challenge and upset us. According to the narrative, Jeremiah got so frustrated and upset he could only cry became known as the weeping prophet. The French romantic poet Alfred de Musset said, Le seul vieux qui me reste au monde, reste au monde, est que la foi, la foi. The only good thing left to me in this world is that sometimes I have cried. The Jesus who came among us wept at the grave of Lazarus and will shed tears whenever we or the world we live in is in crisis. Don't expect to find God among those who will find the tears uncomfortable. As one writer puts it, God, God vanishes from those who seek justice in a cruel, power-hungry, violent world. Like Jeremiah, we need an inner exchange with God if we are to find and hope and hope this world in this world. Jeremiah had no prior experience to hold prophetic office. His resume would reveal nothing to render him fit for a world in which the international political structures were collapsing. If he were being headhunted by any modern Human resources management team in Jeremiah Jeremy would not make the first cut. Our world would never choose a Jeremiah to address domestic issues, let alone international.
national wise. You see, something had gone awry in ancient Judah, and 70 years in Babylonian captivity did not alter the people's thinking. As our ancient ancestors longed to return to Egypt during their long trek through the desert, even so are we longing to get back to those places where God is not on our back telling us how to live. But lest we be deceived, the God we long to get away from does not reside in the place where we feel most secure, the church. Faithful living, my dear ones, is allowing God to invade our lives precisely where we feel most secure and comfortable. So is our desire for a secure lifestyle the problem? God wants us to be safe but not while others remain unsafe. Jeremiah could have avoided God's call, but God had other plans for this young man from Anathoth. God's choice may seem to have been imposed on him, but God will not violate our free will. Jeremiah did not wake up one morning and decide he was going to express his opposition to what was going on in God's country. He complained bitterly about God's choice. The hard public life of a prophet did not sit well with him. Ask anyone who has had to answer to the tough call of God. Moses said he was slow of speech even refusing God's call to stand up to the Pharaoh and demand that the Hebrew slaves be set free. The story of the Exodus must be told where prophets and preachers are called to do God's will. You see, my dear ones, God's will is uncompromising and not easy for us to hear. So we must listen beyond the popular speeches of demagogues, of those who claim to have all the answers. God looks at the entire history of the nations and makes tough claims, tough calls about who has the inner strength to make to God's cause. Faithful living is being open to the tough call of a God who will never abandon us nor leave us alone. Our God is too intrusive for that. We may never know when the tough call will come. Meanwhile, we must remain faithful and be ready to commit our lives to the rule of God in a world that continues to push God out of the picture. In the name of the God who created us, the Christ who has redeemed us, and the Spirit who has set us free. Amen. We invite you now to invest in God's mission, which is another way of saying we are about to receive the morning offering. Let us pray. With joy and thanksgiving, we offer these gifts to you, O God. May they be instruments of healing to the sick, comfort to the lonely, justice to the oppressed, freedom to the unjustly imprisoned, and the message of hope to all who long for your presence. Amen. We continue in prayer as we enter into the prayer of thanks of giving and intercession. Let us pray. 
creator God, you call the prophet from his mother's womb to pluck up and to plant, to call your people back to your faithfulness, to renew their loyalty to your covenant. But they prefer the exile among strange gods and alien cultures. Like the inhabitants of Judah, we have turned away from you. We need you to deliver and rescue us from willfulness, from, from the pride and hubris that have overtaken us. You are our refuge and our strength, our rock and our fortress. Empower us to turn away from the lures of sin and the enticements of evil that us on every side. We beseech you to hear the cries of the hungry and the suffering in those places that we have forgotten and abandoned. May we find the will to reorder our lives so that the hungry may have enough to eat, the suffering have proper medical care, and the homeless have adequate shelter. May we strive for justice and peace in our time. Help us to build a society based on trust and respect. Remove all forms of oppression so that none may turn to violence in their quest for freedom. Fill us with a faith that remains open to your call. Give us a hope that seeks the good of others and a love that embraces the broken hearted and the rejected. Gracious and merciful God, we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, whose self-effacing love has given us a vision of what a, of what a better world is like. And as we struggle to find hope during the pandemic, help us not to forget the many who have died and continue to die from other causes. Today we remember Cecil Jenkins, who has died, and his dear wife, Marion. Give Marion and her daughters the courage to face the future, even though the horizon continues to be dark. May we know the power of a loving God to strengthen and sustain us. We offer this prayer Trusting in the unending grace of God. Amen. Let us continue in the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. The hymn at number 660, How Firm a Foundation. Oh 
pathway shall lie, my graceful sufficient shall be your supply. The flame shall not hurt you, I only design your dross to consume and your gold to refine. The soul that on Jesus has been for